Hey, this is Colin Walker here with ZZ TV. I'm here with Joe Pruitt. How are you doing, Joe? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Colin? Doing pretty well. Thanks. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, I hear you've been working on some interesting stuff over here in your little Skunk Works factory. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's kind of how things go around here. Yeah. Um, no, I've been here, we've been hearing feedback. You know, we introduced iRules uh, with 9.0. Gosh, right. is it going on a year and a half now? It's been out for quite a while. Yeah. Um, well, with the, with the new version of it, with 9.0, and we've introduced a tickle interface with our iRules. So um, it, it offers a lot more options for programmability for the users, right? So sure. now we're seeing users doing a lot of different cool things. Credit card scrubbing, all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah, but the issue here is, is the, the feedback we're getting is that the development environment is somewhat lacking. Right, it's it's a you know you've got a text box and the GUI to go and and type in sometimes somewhat complex rules. Sure, because some of them are pretty easy. Yeah, but some get up to what hundreds of lines. Yeah, right? absolutely. So, so that's pretty rough. For a so I've got box. users doing different things and uh, cutting and pasting to offloaded editors and back and forth and so we just want to. I was thinking, okay, how, how can we go about uh, uh, streamlining this and make this sure. a, more, uh, a little more fun for the users to, to um, work in this environment? Right, because I mean, it, it can make it easier for them to build things. They get more response and stuff, right? So that's yeah. good. Yeah, so, so I've been looking around for um, for uh, Windows-based controls that, that have built-in, um, you know, syntax highlighting, that kind of thing. Sure. And the downside is is that there haven't been readily available ones with built-in support for the Tickle language. Oh, right? okay. So, um, I, you know, I looked around, and who knows, last month or so, I I found uh, one of my favorite uh, editing controls, the Scintilla control, um, has uh, built-in Tickle Lexer now. So um, I was able to take that and... Um, Slap a little gooey around it and do a lot of fun stuff with uh, uh, typing and editing and autocomplete and that kind of so thing. So they finally updated the control so that yeah. it was So we can make use of it. Yeah, we can make use of the uh, the built-in tickle formatting and colorizing oh, very and, cool. and that kind of thing. So, so, so I, I let you do. I, well, I took that as an effort. Okay, well, let's see what we can do. We'll try to fuse the I rules with something we can demonstrate with eye control, right? Sure. Because eye control provides a full mechanism for editing and creating rules and provisioning them. Yeah, so, let's, so let's build, um, I figured I'll build a little Windows app to uh, to allow the users to do some iRule editing, but also allow them to do it live on the servers, but remotely from their machine. So it's a live editor? Absolutely, yeah. So it's not just a text box that you fill things in and drop it anymore? No. It's actually editing on the VIP? No. Nope. And no. it's a standalone client app? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, that's pretty so cool. it's, Yeah, it's a Windows app that you run, and it brings up, and it works just like any other code editor, right? You've got, uh, I can walk you through a demo here in a minute. Do you know? Yeah, absolutely. Sure, yeah, yeah let's so, see it. Um, so, okay. Well, here's the app. It's, it's not too uh, uh, exciting looking from here. <laughs> but what we've got is we've got an editing window here, and, um, well, I'll kind of walk you through the demo, and we'll see how it goes. It gets a little more exciting as we move along. All right. Now, if I want to use an offline mode, let's say I don't to have a big IP to connect to. Yeah. But I just want to do some validate, some checking, and, and syntax highlighting and stuff like that for, sure. for writing things offline. So the, the editor has the built-in um, lexer and auto formatting support for the so language. So you don't have to connect for it to work. You don't. For, for you to do just the syntax validation and, and uh, well, actually syntax validation you do need to be online for. <laughs> but to be able to write your rules with uh, some of the features we've got here. I'll, I'll show you. I'll walk you through. Okay, sure. Let's say I wanted to create a rule. Um, now, this is assuming I, I, I know the language, right? So right. we're going we're gonna to build a rule with an event. Now, we've got autocomplete for all of our, our built-in languages, uh, all of our keywords, um, all of our F5-related keywords, and all of the tickle keywords as well. So, so what should you do there? You start I just to type, type when. Yeah, so it did it for me. I hit tab, it completes it, and then I put a space, and it shows you all the different events oh, that we support. Oh, interesting. So let's say I want to do uh, HTTP request, so I could just start typing. That narrows it down for you. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, well, let's check. Uh, make this rule check for the UI. So there you go. There's all your commands. Colon colon wow. UI. Wow. Right. So is that all the HTTP commands? Uh, it's got every tickle command, every um, I roll command. That we sure, but that list right there was HTTP, right? Everything is prefixed with the string HTTP. Is, is wow. Selected. Yeah, I can go back and. So we've got a whole bunch of so stuff. the whole list like in the wiki, right? Absolutely. Yeah, all of these are um, tied into the wiki. Now, another cool feature about, about this editor is it allows keyword highlighting and hot clicking. 
so the next logical step is tying in all of our keywords to our documentation, right? So, oh, yeah. so it means it takes you to the docs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so so uh, if I've got want to know, let's say I'm writing something I know I want to do about the URI. Right? Sure. But let's say I'm like, oh, what exactly is in there? Or let's say I'm looking for a command for HTTP header. Okay. This header takes several arguments, um, such as pulling out different types of headers. Sure, it's not so simplistic. So all of the keywords now are, are hot clickable. Oh, so if I, Yeah, so if I click on HTTP header, it'll take it to our, take you to the documentation Look on our server for the wiki, yeah. Which that's, is, that's the live wiki page, right? Yeah, this, could, not this takes you up to Dev Central, so all these links are live. This app is kind of communicating with Big IP for the iRolls pieces, which I'll show you in a minute. Sure. But for the documentation aspect, links links you in. Every keyword is tied into the keyword documentation. And on, so that's on, the page on the wiki that has to do with all the different header stuff, which this, is right there now. This is the HTTP header command. If I wanted to look at the HTTP request event, yep. I can click on that, and it'll take me to the documentation for the wow. HTTP here. Nice. Um, now, what about non-F5 uh, commands? Does it do that, too? Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I tied in. Um, we've got... Um, well, the tickle commands, right? So right. Um, I've got links onto the SourceForge documentation for tickle. So okay. let's say you wanted to know about if. There you go. Here's if. You click on if, yep. and it'll take you to the if documentation on so this is source SourceForge. Forge. So this is the the uh, um, definitive tickle reference. Right. So is the one I use for sure. You no, know, this is this is the project documentation for the tickle project. Very Same cool. thing for pretty much all the tickle commands. We've got switch. If you want to do switch command, find out how it works, it'll take you here. Let's see if... Uh, That's a load the page, of course. Yeah. You know, SourceForge has been pretty slow lately. I think we need, they need to get a big IP. <laughs> Always pushing. It'll be coming here in Always a Always pushing. Um, so, the, so that's basically it. You've got the document. And then one, other, one other feature that users have been asking about is what have we done to the Tickle language to... Uh, there, there's several pieces of it that right. we have disabled. It's confusing if you're on a list. Right? Yeah. So we, we do document that in our wiki about the unsupported functions. Okay. But, but it would be nice to throw in a little uh, uh, visual aids here as well. So well, we've sure. we created another um, keyword bucket for all of our um, disabled commands. So okay. if you accidentally typed... The command for uh, socket, bam. Okay. Oh, it turns red. Yeah, so, that's, so that, that tells us that's for the tickle command. <laughs> that's a tickle command, uh -huh. built-in tickle command that we have disabled, so it's not going to work. Interesting. But this is a bit of ways to show you that okay, tick socket so you know, is not going to work. Before even doing the syntax check and getting the errors and all that noise, right? Yeah. So you got to realize all of this stuff. This is um, just built into the editor. We're not talking to Big IP yet at all. So, so you're I can, not even connected yet. No. So you can go and create your rules, and, or you can type, start typing in, editing, doing yeah, keyword hiding, helping, helping, and all of that. The real fun here goes um, when you start getting connected and you're live. Okay. Um, but uh, I guess one more one more feature here in the offline mode is that links to um, Dev Central, yeah, our forums. If you want to go to the forums, you click here. It'll take you to Dev Central forums. Which we've all seen before. Yeah, and. Um, the iRules reference, which takes us to the iRules wiki, which where all those hot clickable links are take you as well. It's the same place, right? This is the index for it. Very cool. And the the um, tickle reference at SourceForge. Gotcha. Which, if there's still oh, it's oh, back up. Back now up. It works. Now Looks it works. like Switch made it finally. That's a good thing. <laughs> um, so the the thing is to make this app uh, as central of a hub as you need. You can get within clicks to any kind of help you want. That's or any cool. kind of support you need. So what happens when you start logging on to the Big IP? All right, let's try it. So this, again, like I said, is an iControl application. So uh, now you're connecting. Yeah, if you don't know what iControl is, if you're an iRules person, iControl is our remote management API that's a web service based, so based. Sure. So I built a, um, I, I pulled in our iControl SDK, yep. imported the whistles for it, and made client bindings for several of our interfaces, our rules interfaces, and then um, systems inter system info and some different things. Um, the, behind this app, there's really not a whole lot of methods. Probably about ten different method calls we make. So oh, it's, okay. it's pretty minimal on what we need to do to get the job done. So there's not a whole lot of traffic being passed or anything. Yeah. So I'm going to talk to. So talk, log into your big IP I'm going to talk to my big IP here. The um, boss, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. If you get the uh, Dilbert reference there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what's going to show up here? What's going to show up here? These are all my eye rules on my big IP. Okay. No so, kidding. Yeah. So here's the here's the different. Stop level. hackers. It's a good one. Let's <laughs> see what. Uh, 
Yeah, this is... I, I've got several ones I've been using for different kind of testing. Sure. Well, I, I kind of jumped the gun here, and it shows you some um, some of the highlighting you get. Uh, so is that I can, colors that you're getting? Yeah, I can click through. So we've got... Um, all this is uh, configured locally um, with, within a configuration file, so it's overridable. But uh, you've got stuff like on custom colors. yeah, it's not built into the GUI, but it's on the it's on part of the installation if you Very want to go cool. in and change that. Um, so we've got you know, stuff like comments being able to be a little bit italicized, italicized. and just uh, and, and colored differently, right. just to give you some more context of of where the different pieces of code are. And so you notice know, one blob of. A uh, very similar code. Right, so you're not looking at one huge text block. Yeah, it makes you like in the GUI. It really makes you, and you can and you can see here from context where all of the the keywords are. Sure. And every, again, everything's clickable. If I want to know about the log command in it in ours, it'll take you to log command. Wow. So you've seen seen all that. Um, I showed you the autocomplete. So if I wanted to do, if I wanted to issue a, like a log command here, all of our commands are built into the autocomplete feature. So all can, of them. Yeah, uh, every F5 uh, command, every wow, I, every I rule command and every tickle command as well. Okay. So if you just start typing something, it'll it'll uh, try to determine what you want to do based off of the, the characters that you've typed in already. Nice. So it shows you the, for logging the different log facilities. Yeah, I was gonna say that's yeah. not even part of the command really. That's just the other facilities command. Yeah. Um, we've also I've also done a few things with like string commands. So if you look at the tickle string command. It'll sh um, I've built in options for <coughs> all the subcommands within the string command. So, you know, it's not part of the actual command. Right. So, wow. So, if you want to do uh, string to lower, it's right, right. there. Very nice. I, I know. If you've I done some IRLs. too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You can. Um, I go string. Nice. I like it. And just hit tab to complete it if you want. I like it. So, that gives you kind of your. Uh, I, I kind of gone over the editing pieces editing, of it, the color right. highlighting, uh, the hot clicks, and, and if you don't like these hot clicks, that's fine. You can turn them off. Everything's customizable. So if you oh, want to, so there's all the different options. If you want to turn off hot spots, nothing's clickable anymore. Oh, okay. sometimes that's a pain uh, when you're editing. It makes it easier to highlight some stuff. Yeah, it's, you accidentally click on things, so you can turn that off. You can turn off autocomplete if you, for some reason, don't want it. Um, and all these are persistent um, when the app shuts down and restarts. Oh, good. Nice. Um, you can turn on stuff like uh, the fold, like auto folding of sections of code. <laughs> if you've got a now, wait, 200 line, yeah. you've got like a 200 line. So that just folded the entire section based on the event, didn't it? Yeah. And then if you want to, every every grouping, <laughs> so logical every grouping, of code, yeah. Yeah. Uh, every control flow here has a way to uh, to expand and contrast it. Now you also said this did syntax checking, right? Yep. Uh, How does that work? Let's see. Let's turn off this full margin. Okay. There's let. Once you play with it, you'll get you see all these different options. Sure. So what what happens with what we've got here uh, as part of the live features of this is, well, once you're editing it, you want to be able to save. You want to create new ones. You want to do that. So I'll, I'll walk you through starting a new one. Okay. Then walk you through saving it and testing it and checking it. Perfect. Uh, if you click, let's say I want to create a new rule, click new rule. Create new I rule. Yeah, so we've we've built a hook into our online code share community. Okay, so this is giving a list of templates. Huh? So these are templates that are downloaded from Dev Central. It looks like the code share. These are sections from our uh, oh, samples from our code share, okay. and and we'll get into sharing a little bit later. But uh -huh. the uh, the pieces here. Are these are approved rules that we have we have went through and validated and approved for sharing across our users? Okay. And so when you the stamp of approval sort of thing. And when you launch the app, <coughs> it'll check it'll ping Dev Central. Are there any new templates available? And pop down and say, "There's new updates available. Do you want to download them?" And then right. that'll give so you more I'll content. Right. So up to date. Yeah. So we'll, as as we develop new things here at Five, everyone else is going to see. Yeah, that's true. Well, they'll have the option to download them if they want. Sure, to. if they want to. Yeah, which yeah. is even better than forcing. And you can also go. So if you want, to, you can use one of our templates. Sure. Let's say you want to build a template that's based off of credit, credit card, card scrubbing. scrubbing. Yeah, we've we did that. We talked about that before. You give it a rule. You give it a name, um, and you say, "My credit card scrubber." And it'll create that. You can also go through, and let's say you just want to pick the events that you want and start with a template for right, events. Right, you have a purpose you're going to build something for. So let's say I want to do something with all the HTTP events. 
you go like that, you select them. Can you just them. hold control to select those? Just like you would any normal select yeah. box, just click down and drag it. Nice. Or you can control and click multiple okay. ones. So there's several so ways to create new new rules. This would create an empty rule with um, empty events. So let's say it, my events with the HTTP. It'll go through and build you a... So a that just created a blank rule with a log statement inside each of those events that you had selected. Yeah, so it's just basically building a boilerplate around, That's the, plate around the event. You can also go through, I'll show you the, the credit card one. So you're selecting that... So I there, yep. Collect this as a temp. So you got two choices when you're creating new ones. One from a from just from the event list, and one from our templates. Sure. So if I call this my CCN, let's make sure I don't have one called my CCN <laughs> and credit card scrubber, and then it will create an, a new event, new rule here. Now you'll notice that this is bolded and it's got a star next to it, which means it hasn't been saved yet. Oh, okay. So those are the new ones that you've added. Yeah. Okay. Um. So here's the. Uh, oops. Make this a little bigger here. Like you said, some rules can get quite large. See, and it's this kind of rule that makes this sort of editor necessary almost, right? Yeah. This, this is a lot of code to put in the text box. Look at that. Where's that regex there? Look at that regex. Yeah, this is the re regular. How many times would that wrap in a text box? Yeah, so we've got word wrap, and the, the editor here supports word wrap or no word wrap if you don't want to wrap it. Oh, even. Nice, nice. So, um,. Got all your options there, but kind of this shows you with a kind of a large rule how, much, how nice it is. Now, the next step is you want to save it, right? So all you need to do is click. We've got the save button here, which is pretty standard. You can right click here, you can click save. So let's say I save this. Now now that it's saved, it's actually on the big IP. So it's not bold anymore, no star. Nope, and it's not on the big IP. So if I go up to my, my big IP here, Let's go for local traffic rules. Which one of my CCNs right there? So it was so just that save button in the editor actually saved it directly to your big IP. Yeah, these are all. All these are we're editing rules on the big IP. We're not editing a local. Where okay. get a chance again? We'll get later about how we can archive those. <laughs> okay. um, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Okay, okay. Well, it's <laughs> cool stuff to see. But so. think of this as an alternate alternative to working on the Big IP GUI. Right. So rather than from the command line or in the text file itself, or in you the bring up this app, you can go edit, save rules. Now, um, another issue is like what we've had in the past. Uh, uh, feedback from customers is, you know. Once they compile them, edit failures or, or parsing failures or issues with the format of the rule yep. and how they get around the uh, the complexity of our error messages and things like right, that. Right, because I've seen some of these error messages yeah. myself. I mean, uh, I roll or two, and they just they don't always do anything for me. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna type something in here, which is just a bogus, a bogus value. Sure. And we built in a syntax checking feature. Check the syntax of the current I rule. So if I click here and I click sex, check syntax, or you can right click and do check syntax, it's available. Okay. Or you can, I believe, do. Edit? Uh, no. No, it's. So it's not available. Just there. on there, it's okay. on the toolbar. Um, so if I click check syntax, so it goes to the big IP, on and this will actually do? talk to the big IP. And try to parse this um, rule as if you were inputting it. Yeah. So, it, but to keep in mind, it's not saving the rule. Right. It's creating a temporary rule so that you're not affecting the current one you're working on. Right. Look at that. And how does it align, too? So it'll go through and it reads the messages from the BIP. Right. And for every message, every airline number, it's got uh, we, we put bookmarks in here so you can wow. easily jump to see where. Where, where messages are, are and you can also click on these lines and it'll highlight the line huh. that has there. Pretty easy to see. I guess we could try something a little more. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. For some, now, I, don't, I, I have no clue why this causes putting in a command in here messes up that uh, that, that command, but it but it does. That the tickle interpreter doesn't like that. But anyway, you can see where the, t the, um, the, errors, the, are. the errors are. I'll go ahead and correct this. And then if I do a syntax check, it should say it's a valid rule. Wait, what did that say? It said this text is a valid rule. Oh, okay. <laughs> I missed it. You're too fast. Uh, I can do it again. This text is a valid rule. Yes, it is. So um, I'll have to come up with an example where it gives you a whole lot of error messages throughout the screen. But, okay. But... Uh, yeah, I've written lots of things. I'll, I'll let you guys figure that out for yourself. I'm, I'm sure I'll have that. <laughs> I'm good at that part. 
right, so we've got the, the, the check um, format checking. Sure, so, so this is text checking, which is awesome. Yeah, so we've got highlighting. So the highlighting, yeah, so you can click through. So you've got that. Um, we've got the ability to save rules. We've got the ability to um, delete them. Let's say I don't want it anymore. What's uh, saved, right? The MyCCN will go ahead and save it again, which is saving its server. And let's say I'm done with it. I can delete it. So that's and, not on your big IP anymore. And it's actually talked to the big IP using iControl saying, delete this rule, gone. Very See you good. Later. Now, what do you do if uh, you may ask, oh no, I accidentally deleted my rule? Oh, you know. Right. Uh, well, yeah. Well, how do you recover from that, right? Yeah, the wrong rule or something, right? So, what we built into this rule editor is an archive um, import export feature. Oh, so cool. you can go to your big, uh, you can connect in here, and once you, here, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to re reset the list of all the ones from the big IP. So you just refresh to make it, so it's the current list. Yeah, so this refresh, what it'll do is it'll wipe out your local and download everything again gotcha. and s start from scratch. Okay. We've added a archive um, feature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export. So this is success successfully archived 22 rules. So what that do? It took all these rules in the list here. And it saved them locally to my disk. So what, I, what you can do now is you can say, well, it pops up this folder, but if you say archive, open, open archive, archive folder, folder, yeah, we create a, a folder under our um, application directory yep. in, in, in your space. And look at that. It has a text file for each of those rules. It sure does. And these are all here. So now if I want to look at uh, the credit card scrubber. Huh. So it's just a text file, so these are all local on your disk. So you can take these, you can back them up, you can zip them up, do whatever you want. The interesting nice. thing that comes into play here is that you can take this rule, and let's say I actually accidentally delete CCN. Okay. Now CCN's gone. See you later. So now CCN's gone off the server. And off your big IP too, right? But we have a backup on in your, here. In your folder, yep. Yeah, so there's several ways that you can restore that. You can say file archive import, and okay. what that does is it imports every one of these back into the application. Well, that's all of them, right? All of them. So what if you just want one? Yeah, if you just want one, you just drag and drop. No, really? And there you go. So it, it, And that we took the rule that was in that text and dropped it into your editor, too, yep. didn't it? And now you go save, and it's back on the big IP. That's pretty slick. Um, other options are for dragging and dropping is, let's say you want... Uh, you want to just save it to your desktop. So create so that, a text file on your desktop this time. Yep. So <laughs> we've got the automated way to archive um, by exporting and importing them. But you can also individually. But you can also them. drag and drop. Let's say you want to dr send them to an email or whatever. Um, you can also, you know, dra you can also, if you want to, drag and drop oh, from so rules to other to, rules. Append to each other, huh? Yep. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah, we only lost a single one. So that, that shows you the archiving feature. So yeah. if you accidentally delete them, it's a good way. And it's a good way if you want to provision one server to another. What sure. you do is you connect to one big IP, export, okay, disconnect, IP. connect to the other big IP, import. Nice. And then, so and then the exact same with the rules. Or you can bring up two editors between each other, one for one and one for the other big IP, and drag and drop drag between and drop them. That way. Yep. Yeah, so Very that's nice. the way it works. Um, that kind of gives you that. We've got full, s a little back to the editor, search and replace type of things. Oh, uh, nice. The whole search, search functionality. So if I want to find all references of, what's well, a good one, um, log. And let's say mark all. Huh. Good, good. So it'll, got it'll, that and it'll see there. through. So we do the bookmarks again. Yep. That shows you all the lines where they're at. And you can, and you can use the standard like F3 command to cycle through the different searching and replacing. So for really, really long rules, if you want to get into that, we can do the search and replace. Cool. Um, find, find previous. Um, we've been through most of the view stuff. Uh, here, now, um, that, that kind of gets us past the editing pieces, right? So that's all the basic editing stuff that you've been doing. Yeah. Um, now, now the question is, OK, well, I've created the I rule. I've validated that it compiles. So parse, right. you know, we can pre-compile it, and we can store it. But what do you do? What's the next step, right? You need to provision it to your server. Sure, I want to add it to the IP. Right. So, and um, you want to get it be able to. So I don't want to have to go back into the GUI to, uh, just so I can drag a rule or put a, apply a rule to a virtual server. 
Oh, okay. That's kind of lame. So it's, it's pretty, <laughs> why not do it here? I control it. It's one call to one method call within the so virtual server saying, interface to assign a rule. So I can't, not only can I see, but you're saying I can put it on the, the bit at the same time? You can. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, let's pick one. I already had one of these uh, assigned here. How about we do this one? Okay. I've built a, there's a properties dialog on these guys. So you can go in the prop, uh, properties for all of the different, all of your different eye rules. You can bring them up, as many up as you want. They're just uh, modeless dialogs. Gotcha. For each of the rules. Now, what this section shows, this shows you your, yeah, this shows, shows you your virtual servers that are on your machine. So I have four virtual servers uh, on my big IP. Okay. So these virtual servers are not using this rule. Sure. There's no virtual servers using the rule. So yeah. let's say I want to be able to assign this rule to a virtual. Okay. So what I do is I take expert. I've got um, one of my servers with some web content, um, HTTP. I can do. Uh oh. Oh, that's a. You know what? I got. I have to use a different rule. Okay. Testing in progress. It's going to be a live demo. Yeah. Yeah, let's try this one. Well, you would have gotten the same error message had you been the big, on the big IP and tried to transfer it, assign it. It has something to right. do with the, the configuration. I think that... that uh, um, so that, wasn't, that was not an editor issue. That's a big IP issue, huh? Wow, this is... I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's going on. Uh-oh. Um, well, we'll skip past this. I've got, I, I just upgraded my big IP, so oh, it may okay. be an issue okay. with the okay. lightest thing on that. No, Theoretically, you can drag and drop. Okay. I just did this earlier. Um, well, okay, now what you can do next is once you've got... Um, it's assigned. Once you've got them assigned. Once that works. Yeah, this is bizarre. Let's see. What about this one? The this one's already got it. Okay, so this oh, one's got... Oh, okay, so that was already working on it. This one's already got the... Um, Something was going on with that rule. Um, so this one, I've assigned this this uh, rule so to this virtual right. called expert revert HVP, um, and vice versa. If you want to take it out of provisioning or back in, you can do that. Okay. What I've also added is uh, a hookup to our statistics interfaces. So we've got statistics yeah, for the rule? yeah. So most people don't know that you can quit. We've got built-in statistics for the rules. So what kind of stats can you track? Well, we can look at total executions, okay. failures, um, aborts. But what's interesting, and not many people know about them, is the the built-in diagnostics we've got for CPU load on the timing, rules. right? Yeah, it's, it's called the timing command that's built in. So turning on timing lets you look and get a peek into the number of clock cycles that a rule is actually using. Nice. So we have questions about how do you optimize I rules and which way is better than or worse than another, right? Sure. Regular expressions versus ifs versus this great strings. Rule more cycles than the other rule. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and when you're talking about tens of thousands of connections a second, it, it, it makes a difference. So, oh, yeah. so if you go and you turn on timing, you can uh -huh. peek into the clock cycles. So what I can do and here. And rule it. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a page down here, and you'll see that the executions are increasing. Oh wow. But I don't have timing turned on. So what I'm gonna do is timing on. Okay. Save. And that's all I need to do. Now I refresh and it shows you the. Look at that. One execution. Now rule init. It shows. cycles. Yeah. It shows that rule init ran. Which happens every time. But we don't have any because there's been no HTTP request. Right. So so if I do, I'll get something that's just kind of repeating, pulling things down. Okay. And start refreshing them. You'll start seeing. Your executions. You'll start seeing the average Six. CPU cycles, minimum and maximum CPU cycles. Look at that. And you'll see the executions increasing. So when you funnel traffic through here, you can do you can refresh this. Now what you need to do is you need to take these uh, the CPU cycles, divide them by the processor speed, and multiply it by the. Yeah, I think so I there's really some, had a post on that somewhere. The so so it gets and that actually shows you the actual number of CPU cycles per transaction. Right, is what the cycle says. Yeah, but so it's but not for all quite usable data, but, it, but it's a but it, but for optimization standpoint, if you just want to look at which one's better than another, sure. looking at average cycles, this number is perfectly valid. Sure. You can run one rule and make a slight change to it, 
and then apply it if again. It's less, right. You're doing better. If it's less, you're doing better, right? Sure. Um, so, well, you know, granted, if you've got 10,000 requests, there's going to be more cycles than if there are 10 requests. Of course. So it will scale that way, but if you're doing a one to one comparison on traffic and you apply one rule and another rule, Cool. And, you, and your your connections are, are pretty close. Um, then you know you can use this number to kind of get a peek at how you can optimize your rules. Nice. There's another little nugget that I threw in here. Well, I, I like that it's not just an editor. It seems like there's a lot more than that, really. It's it, the goal here was to re, kind of replace what you need to do in the GUI with iRules and make it something you can do on, on your Windows platform. I like it. So that shows you you're pretty close to succeeding. Like, yeah, so that shows your statistics and um, the, the provisioning of the virtuals. So you can add up to different virtuals there, yeah. You can also, um, oh, okay, we got into, we got, another thing that users are using within rules a lot are data groups. So if okay. you want to store a um, list of things to be able to combine with like our match class and find class yeah, commands. Class stuff, right. Yeah, um, well, we call them data groups in the group, we call them classes in, in uh, iRules. Not um, confusing. Yeah, yeah, but but it's all the same thing. So why not uh, build a? Why why do we want them to go through the, the GUI to do that as well? So I, I, I threw in a little dialogue that lets you manage your data groups. Oh, there's as more. Well. Yeah, so it slices, it dices. Click on the little uh, grid here. A little and, grid right there. Okay, and it shows you the uh, the different data groups on your big IP. I've got a couple address data groups. Uh, so that's a no list of data groups broken into what? Different types of data groups, right? Yep. So we've got three. Well, there's 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 also an external type, but we I haven't built this for okay. that because I want to be able to edit the content. Um, so there's there's data groups that have data lists or whatever you want to call them. Yep. Class lists that contains that are strings. Yep. That are integer or we call them value data classes, but they basically contain integers. Um, and also address, which is network address. Sure. So if if you want to go through and um, Let's see. You can add, edit, or delete each of these things. So, so if I want to go and when you hit add, is that going to add a, a new data group? Yeah, add will add a new data group. It's basically exactly. creating a new one. So let's say I want to create a new address data group. Okay. So you hit and I'll call it uh, my addresses. And then you type them in. Um, you can either you can do yeah, and you can also do sitter format if you want. Oh, nice. Another thing that the GUI does is if you don't, um, there's a you know you, you need to logically add the address and the mask to create the address. And sure. On the GUI, you type it all in and you click submit, and then it'll pop you back an error later saying, oh, you need to go back and change these. This was real time. I built it in, so now if you do a 24-bit, you know, nice. you block them out. So you can also do you know 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 10. You do single address. 20 by 20 by 20. Sure. Nice. So those are the same thing. Yep. Um, 10 dot 0 dot. I like it. Um, and click create. So that created a new data group on the big so IP. So now on the big IP, there's a new di new data group you can use from your rules. Yep. Wow. And an example in the. Uh, the rules here on data groups is, let's see if I can find one with like a match class in it. There we go. Match class, yeah, there it is. So like this one looks for a string list called valid methods. Yep. So this is an ex a list. And this command would say, you know, if, if it can't find the method, HTTP method inside this data group, um, yeah, you know, it's log. Yeah. So that's how you would use them. But this, this allows you to, from within here, go and create Let's say I want to create valid methods. Let's get post. Let's say we only want to allow get and post. Sure. So there's your data group, and there's there's how you would access it. Huh. So you can go through here and you can edit data groups, the ones that exist already. So you can edit the content that's already there. And so I can take and delete get. Or we'll edit it. Edit, we'll bring it back up here. Nice. Um, same kind of thing. It's pretty straightforward. It's it's pretty similar to how the GUI works. I like it. But again, it allows you um, an illustration of how you just I control to do this if you wanted to. But it allows you again everything you need for my rules to building them, and deploying them, building it right into the That's app. That's a lot itself. of stuff crammed into one application. Let's see if there's anything else here. Uh, 
Oh yeah. Okay. Um, there's more. On the yeah, there's a few more things. Yikes. I don't. Know. Um, the we showed you earlier how on the new templates. Yeah. When you go to create one, we tie it into our code share community. Sure. Well, we've also well, we got to have a way to get that from the users, right? And, okay. And have that facilitate the users to be able to share their rules with people and with us. So we built in. Uh, into the application itself, the ability to for you to publish your rule if you want to. You can so try I, and share with the community from the application too. Yeah. So if I took this rule here, um, let's, let's say this one, and I want to uh, let's pick one. I don't know. Let's say change server type. Okay. Let's say I, want, I I think this is a really cool rule that people can use. Sure. So I can me. I can take this and I can go through the web and contribute it to CodeShare. Via the wiki, right? Through through the wiki. Okay. Or right from the editor here, I've got a little button here. You Share your eye rolls. See this central community. The two little guys kind of yeah sharing stuff, putting their arms around each other or something with a little. You can right click share as well. So what this will do is it launches the. Uh, a form that'll submit the uh, rule to our server. So that has the rule. So I'll put my and name. Description and stuff. And, <laughs> and uh, we that, make make well, you select the terms and conditions here, basically saying that you know it's everything you're submitting, you're allowed to submit and, and share. Yeah, and blah, 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 blah. you got all that. And you click share, and what this will do. I rule successfully submitted to Dev Central after it's reviewed by the staff. It'll be available to the public. So, so it'll work. come to us, and we'll go through and we'll review these. And if we if we find that they are there's not a duplicate of one we've already got, yeah. or or that um, you know it's appropriate stuff like that, then we can add it to the download section. So the next time you bring up your I rule editor, it'll, it'll you'll be, be able to download it. That's and it'll be part really of the, cool. Uh, part of the share, and then we'll also take those and import those into the co share section of the wiki as well. So it looks like we really, really start to share this stuff. Yeah. How cool. Yeah, trying to uh, make make things a little easier. So um, is that it? Is there more? I mean, that's, that's a lot of stuff. Let's see. I think I've shown you the online stuff, the um, the sharing, data group editor, um, yeah, some built-in configuration stuff. Uh, yep, We've got links, links to all the help. We've also got a tip of the day section, which is again something that we're. This is a live download as part of our. So when the app starts up, it'll check for updates and download. Oh, them. nice. So this will so go through and we. Yeah, we so so up. we're taking feedback and sometimes users will post uh, tidbits to the forum saying, "Hey, I found this is better than this." Or, sure. So, so tips about the iRule language in general, Tickle in general, yeah. Um, but also tips about the application. Here. Gotcha. So if you want to just kind of walk through uh, like a one paragraph, page by page of, of different cool things that you could do. Very cool. You can just slip through here and it'll tell you the different like. Yeah, you can archive your rules by making use of the import export commands. Ah, stuff like nice. that. So, so if you want a quick run through on it, you can. Um, the, the, help. Yeah, this will kind of give you some ideas of what the application can do. Very cool. And the last, kind of the last thing that I didn't really go over yet was the help. And we do have a, uh, um, a online help for this application. Oh, cool. It's an actual so help page. Just, just as kind of a standard help page, but it'll go through the different um, windows in the application. So let's say I want to go to the new window and find out about it. You yeah. click help, it'll take you to the new. Ah, uh, very cool. And it'll tell you what the templates are and what the different things are. I and, like it. And also, what we've got in here is revision history. So, so when you can tell when, what's being added, what's being when, changed. When versions are added, what some of the different features we've got. That's some pretty impressive stuff, Joe. So how long has it been well, taking? How long have you worked on this for months? Or? Well, this is one of those things that it, I think it took about uh, the first ninety percent took about ten uh, percent of the time. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> well, now tweaks from there, huh? The, the core pieces of this I got done in under a week. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the main editor functionality and the saving and yeah. you know it's it's the feedback for search and find and all all, all the. Um, yeah. the Add-ons. Yeah, the, the fluff that goes on top, right? Fluff, exactly. That kind of, right. and so the usability feedbacks and things. But the core piece of it, it took me less than a week to get 
the, the syntax piece of it, the auto completion, the, the saving, the parsing, and all sure. that. Well, I have a feeling it's going to pay off, which is uh, pretty useful stuff. But the last question I have is where can I get it? Oh, you can get it. Well, okay, there's several places you can get it. Okay. But number one is Dev Central. So come hop on to Dev Central, and um, we'll have links on there to, for you to be able to download it live on the web. Section, huh? Yeah. Yep. And be able to download it live. You'll be able to download it and install from it. We also are supporting uh, Microsoft's Click Once deployment, which, if you don't know what that is, um, we're, we're working on that, and basically what happens is you can connect and install it from the web, and then every time you launch the app, it pings back to the server and asks if there are updates. Ah, so not just cool. we've got the content update in the application, but the application, the application itself. itself. So if there's bug fixes that you report or things that um, you know want changed or yeah. we make changes or we find issues, we just throw that up on the server, and then the next time you launch up, it says, hey, there's a new version available that you want to download it. Okay, sounds good to me. Yeah. Well, uh, one more point is yeah. that this is a uh, um, freely available application. Okay. We're so giving it away. Charged for no, we're not charged. And uh, we're gonna. The plans are to release the source out to Dev Central as well. So. So the um, source is gonna be free too. Yep. We're gonna give it all away. So you want to. Well, Gotta love that. Yeah. We're using. Um, uh, there's a couple third-party controls in here that we we um, document in our about box. Yep. And with those, we'll we'll supply the uh, application. We'll probably end up shipping this with our SDK as well. Very cool. Yeah. Hey, well, thanks for taking the time to uh, show us your new toy, and thanks. we look forward to downloading it and trying it. Cool. All right, thanks a lot, man. Hey, no problem.